Rockets are the gateway to space for mankind. This breakthrough invention reached its perfection after two millennia of knowledge. Now, they can safely transport personnel, passengers, or payloads to space and land them back on Earth for reuse. But despite all these features, many still prefer the 20-year-old rocket technology, built by the Japanese company Mitsubishi. The rocket is known as H-2A, and it has been soaring through the skies for over two decades, successfully launching payloads into orbit and solidifying its place as a reliable and versatile launch system. Out of 39 consecutive missions, it never failed once. This was the rocket that carried UAE's first satellite, the Hope to the orbit of Mars. In 2024, two H-2A rockets will be launched from Earth to transport two satellites in space. Each time the rocket will cost more than $90 million and live only a working life of 30 minutes. But to build it from scratch takes more than a year. Let's delve into the process of rocket manufacturing, its design, assembly and launch. You will also see the manufacturing of satellites. Lastly, we will shed some light on new players in the space race. So, enjoy this informative video till the end. Typically, a rocket consists of a cylindrical body with several sections, but a payload at its top nose cone. Following the payload section, the H-2A has the second stage fuel section with two separate fuel tanks, one for liquid hydrogen and the other for liquid oxygen. This fuel tank is connected to its engine. Likewise, the first stage fuel section and the first stage engine comes at the bottom. Also, two or more solid rocket fuel boosters can be installed. These provide extra mile coverage for the rocket to escape gravity with heavier payloads. One crucial aspect of rocket design is creating a strong yet lightweight body that can withstand extreme temperatures and pressures during launch and flight. To achieve this, engineers use a unique technique involving thin sheets to construct the rocket's body. The sheets used in rocket construction are exceptionally thin, just 17 mm thick, these sheets are precisely cut into a specific pattern known as an isogrid structure, measuring around 2 mm tall. This innovative design not only minimizes weight but also provides remarkable strength and durability. By using such thin materials, engineers create a remarkably resilient structure capable of enduring intense forces without compromising the rocket's overall mass. The primary step entails fashioning the initial stage liquid oxygen tank this vital element houses the oxidizer needed for liftoff. Envision this as the inception of the rocket, where every part is carefully constructed with exactness. The fuel tanks of liquid rocket engines constitute a considerable segment of the launch vehicle. Thus, the tanks must be exceedingly slender and lightweight. To achieve this feat, engineers employ a technique known as shaving, carefully removing material from the surface while preserving its durability. This ensures that even though the metal is remarkably thin, it retains the necessary fortitude for flight. To put all of these together, their skilled and qualified workers will slowly do the welding process. This is done with such precision and accuracy to ensure that the rockets they build are safe and of high quality. In this step, individual components such as the valve body, seat, stem, and actuator are assembled according to specifications. They use different kinds of fasteners and torque the valve to complete this process. A rocket, like any other vehicle, relies heavily on its engines, but these engines do not produce any mechanical power. Instead, they produce thrust that pushes the rocket upward. For the H-2 rocket, the Japanese developed a cryogenic, liquid-fueled stage combustion rocket engine, the LE-7A. It is the first large-scale liquid rocket engine to be built and manufactured in Japan, making it a noteworthy accomplishment in the field of aeronautical engineering. This engine uses liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen as fuel, which are stored in two separate, insulated fuel tanks at extremely low temperatures to maintain their liquid state. The engine uses two turbo pumps, one for each propellant. The LH2 pump takes in liquid hydrogen from the tank and increases its pressure. The pressurized LH2 is then split into two streams. One stream goes to the main combustion chamber and the other stream goes to the expander cycle. 
The expander cycle is all about using hot pre-burner gas to power a turbine, which further boosts efficiency and thrust by extracting more energy. On the other hand, the LOX pump takes in liquid oxygen from the tank and increases its pressure. The pressurized LOX is then sent to the main combustion chamber. In this way, the LE7A engine combines hydrogen and oxygen in the combustion chamber and produces high-pressure gas at a rate faster than the speed of sound. The heat generated by combustion exceeds 3500 degrees Celsius, necessitating that the combustion engine be capable of withstanding extreme temperatures. This is why the nozzle skirt is made of special heat-resistant materials. It works as a funnel that further accelerates the exhaust of combustion gases. To achieve the required tolerances and surface polish, nozzles have to be machined precisely. After that, it is connected to its engine. Now, the engine is ready for the tests. Before firing the engine, engineers often conduct cold flow tests. These tests flow propellants without ignition to check for leaks and ensure proper flow through the engine. The engine is mounted on a test stand and fired while firmly secured to the ground. Engineers monitor various parameters like thrust, temperature and pressure to verify performance. The engine is tuned to run best at a given altitude and under particular operating circumstances. After building and testing, the engine and the tanks of each stage are connected with each other. Next, the center body section of the rocket is built. It separates the first stage section and the second stage sections. The rocket begins to take on its final form as each piece comes together. In the assembly stage, the dream set in motion by the contract and the meticulous craftsmanship in manufacturing culminate in the physical embodiment of human ambition, ready to defy gravity and reach for the stars. Likewise, the marvels orbiting our planet, the eyes in the sky that guide our communication, navigation and scientific understanding are crafted in pristine environments called clean rooms. Here, engineers, technicians, and sometimes even robots collaborate to breathe life into satellites, intricate marvels of technology designed to withstand the harsh realities of space. Satellites come in all shapes and sizes, dictated by their mission and functionality. Imagine a giant rectangular box beaming down internet connectivity. That's a communications satellite Picture a cylindrical observatory peering into the depths of the cosmos. That's a space telescope. Each unique form dictates the layout of the clean room, with specialized tools and workstations arranged for optimal assembly. The miniaturization revolution has seen the rise of small satellites, also known as small sats. These nimble spacecraft, often no bigger than a shoebox, offer quicker development times and lower costs, making space exploration more accessible than ever. Building these pincers at marvels requires delicate handling and specialist techniques, but the rewards are vast, from environmental monitoring to internet access in remote areas. A crucial element for many satellites is the solar panel. These panels unfurl like wings once in orbit, bathing the spacecraft in sunlight and converting it into electricity. Their deployment is a critical step meticulously planned and tested to ensure they catch the sun's rays at optimal angles. The intricate mechanisms involved require precise engineering and careful handling in the clean room. Not all satellites rely solely on the sun's energy. Some deep space explorers, or those maneuvering in orbit, require propulsion systems. These can range from chemical rockets to ion thrusters, each with its own complexities. Integrating these systems within the satellite demands expertise and careful consideration of weight distribution and fuel efficiency. Before venturing into the unforgiving void, a satellite must undergo rigorous testing. From withstanding the bone-chilling vacuum of space in thermal chambers to enduring the bone-shaking vibrations of launch, these tests ensure the satellite can survive the journey and function flawlessly. Only after passing these grueling trials can the spacecraft be deemed ready to join the ranks of those orbiting our planet. Before finalizing, the sensitive parts of the satellite are wrapped with a thin golden cover. 
This cover is made of thin aluminum with a special kind of insulation called multi-layer insulation. It serves two purposes. First, it reflects back the sun radiation coming from the sun side, and second, it traps heat from the shady areas. In this way, the temperature on both sides of the satellite remains balanced and endurable. Last but not least, satellites are transported to the launch site with great care and extreme cleanliness. They are housed in special containers. Likewise, the assembled rocket reaches the launch site at Tanegashima in southern Japan. It is slowly erected to place the satellite in its nose cone. This section is known as payload fairing, which ensures aerodynamic protection during launch. It is assembled and installed in a dedicated facility, requiring precise alignment, cleanliness, and a secure connection. The rocket then embarks on its final terrestrial journey, transporting it to the launch pad. This operation requires specialized vehicles and careful planning to ensure the safe and sound delivery of the precious cargo. Specially designed transporters, often crawler transporters, cradle the rocket horizontally, distributing its weight evenly and minimizing stress. The journey proceeds at a snail's pace to prevent vibrations or jolts that could damage the vehicle. Skilled operators carefully navigate the transporter, avoiding uneven terrain or obstacles that could compromise its integrity. Reaching the launch pad marks the culmination of this meticulous journey. Seriousness, hope of success, and fear of failure are visible on every face in the launch control center. Everyone is waiting for a confirmation from the ground launch sequence engineer. The rocket leaves the ground with flames, largely coming out of the boosters. These solid rocket boosters last approximately two minutes with the rocket. When their fuel runs out, they separate, leaving the rocket in the sky with its first stage engine. Similarly, the payload fairing is jettisoned after four and 10 seconds on account of lower atmospheric resistance at such heights. With that, it leaves the first stage section behind. The second stage engine fires at this point, propelling the now lighter rocket to accelerate in zero gravity space. Ready to fulfill its mission, the rocket reaches the designated orbit and releases the satellite. The speed required to place a satellite into orbit is about 8 km per second. In space, due to air friction and the thrust of the engine, the rocket easily achieves this speed. At this speed, the rocket could cover the three-hour journey of a bullet train in just one minute. Once the satellite is separated, the rocket's mission is completed. A rocket, taking over a year and a half to manufacture, finishes its short but crucial lifetime just 30 minutes after liftoff. Even if the classic space race of the Cold War is finished, space exploration is witnessing a greater number of participants than ever before. India made a major breakthrough with Chandrayaan-3. In 2023, the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, successfully sent its spacecraft into lunar orbit which swiftly touched the moon's soil. After this, India became the fourth nation to successfully land a spacecraft on the moon. They used the LVM-3 rocket to move the Chandrayaan-3 to the moon, which is a three-stage medium lift launch vehicle developed by the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO. 
Another accomplishment that India has made in the space sector is the Mars Orbiter mission. ISRO managed to reach the orbit of Mars in its first try, making India the first Asian nation to do so in a meridian try. In the US, Elon Musk began a new endeavor in the space industry by developing relaunchable rockets. His company, SpaceX, now provides reusable rockets that fly across the atmosphere to deliver the payload and safely return to land. Reusing these rockets reduces a significant amount of cost. For instance, to build a new rocket such as the H-2A, it takes more than $90 million, while the Falcon 9 from SpaceX costs $67 million per launch. This reduction in cost attracted more companies to use rockets for commercial purposes. One of these companies is Blue Origin, which is owned by another world's richest person, Jeff Bezos. Unlike SpaceX, they offer suborbital space tourism flights with their New Shepard vehicle. The New Shepard takes off from the Earth with six or more passengers in its capsule. The rocket takes the capsule into suborbital space and returns it to its base. The released capsule reaches the Earth due to gravity and parachutes. According to some reports, this company charged $1.25 million per seat in their early launches. In 2022, Blue Origin faced an incident during a launch in which passengers remained safe due to the emergency release of the capsule, but the rocket became engulfed in fire. This accident halted Blue Origin from offering its space tourism services, which a rival company saw as an opportunity. Virgin Galactic, another space company founded by another billionaire, Richard Branzo, offers the same suborbital space tourism, but in a different way. Their VSS Unity spacecraft is not launched from a launch pad with typical rockets. Instead, it is taken into the air by a special airplane to an altitude of 82 to 89 kilometers. From there, the VSS Unity, which is the main ship with a rocket engine, releases. It then flies to suborbital space. Interestingly, this spaceship has wings that enable it to land on Earth like a typical aircraft. It is also noteworthy that Virgin Galactic charges $450,000 each. For the future, many national space organizations and private space companies are in constant strife to reach Mars and expand human life there. Recently, SpaceX tested its third flight of the Starship. It is a fully reusable transportation system capable of carrying both crew and cargo to Earth orbit, helping humanity return to the Moon and ultimately traveling to Mars and beyond. With that, we end this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section. Like and subscribe. We will see you next time.